teach any man how to be a nerd? I will turn things over to your moderator, Ted Leo. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, thank you, Amy. You should know before we begin that this is not some roast kind of thing. This was actually initially uh, Amy's idea uh, in conversation with Paul and then, and then later me because uh, in our... Uh, Everything here is happening with affirmative consent. Exactly. <laughs> According to the uh, Joker Cruz Code of Conduct. And um, this being our, our, our second year uh, on the ship, you know, we were, we were very moved uh, last year by the whole experience. And um, uh, what happened? Over the, <laughs> over the years that, uh, that, that we've uh, been working together, um, it's become a, a really big part of our uh, repartee that one of us is nerdier than the other. Um, and it occurred to me that, that the, uh, you know, uh, one of the ways to sort of uh, feel included in, in any scene is to be able to, uh, to banter within the language of that, you know, subculture. Um, so everybody have, probably has a different goal for tonight. My, my goal is simply or a good outcome for me would be to be able to get Amy to a place where at some point in the near future, if we're uh, on the road and you say, hey, you know, pull over, I gotta use a can, uh, I, and I say to you, boy, you get your still suit. <laughs> you, you can then not only know what I mean, but you could respond by saying, well, if you knew anything about still suits, you'd know that uh, the recycling is actually powered by uh, motion, so me just sitting here in one of the cars and then jumping and the <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, be a place to get. So, um, well, this sort of did it came about because I fe I feel like my nerd credentials are really lacking, and you know I want to feel part of this because it, it is I love being on this crew so much, and so in discussions with. Paul, I, I, I said, you know, I feel like there should be a curriculum or syllabus for someone like me. What, and, and, then I, and then I feel like there should be an equation that uh, maybe some things are, have sort of a higher nerd power than others. The other question is, are there some things that detract from nerddom, that, that subtract? Uh, so that's, that's uh, you've developed a well, yeah, this, this was hurriedly, hurriedly scrawled together about an hour ago. We put the best mathematical minds uh, on, the, on the boat uh, together, those minds being, being Paul Storm and Jonathan. I, I was there for colored commentary. Um, and, uh, Some we, people are already objecting to the math. Well, so, okay, so let's, let's, let's explain. I'm sitting right here. So there's, there's a, we have a, we have a uh, the number we are searching for at the end of the night is an actual nerd. Right. Now, ner actual nerd is the product of P, which is perceived nerd. It's Amy's self-perception. Oh. Amy's self-perception of... Oh, excuse me, some. Sorry. Thank you, see? That's why I have all of my editors here. Hypercorrection is an important part of it. <laughs> That is the law of um actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of, it's been a long night. P is perceived nerd. Hang on, we need a microphone over here. For we'll, we'll get it over here. As soon as I'm done talking, we're going to hand it over to Mike. P is because if we get, Mike starts talking, we're never getting out of this room. <laughs> P is second cardinal. Train of a nerd hogging the mic. <laughs> P is perceived nerd, which is a number somewhere between negative five and positive five on this bell curve, which we are referring to as the Deason scale. Yeah, each of those numbers is one point extra on the Deason scale. Uh, yes. <laughs> Whereas zero is where someone perceives the average person's level of nerd on a particular what item. Negative, yeah. negative well, is the. Well, for, here, for example, zero on the Deason scale might be. I've seen the Star Wars movies. Sure. Yeah. Negative, I, have, I have never wanted to love sports more than this one. <laughs> Negative five is I have never seen a film in my life. And positive five is please let me show you my manifesto about IG-88. <laughs> this is not a scale, this is a bell curve. So you're talking actually about the averages of large amounts of bell curve. Okay. For the, purpose, for the purposes 
of numbers, we're going to accept lots of generalities here. And lots of... I also object to the... I also object to the slope. I mean, the slope on the front end is clearly positive. The slope on the negative end just peters out. Like, it doesn't even touch the bottom of the chart. How are we doing so far, Amy? How do you feel? Feel like a nerd? Welcome to the tribe. Okay. It's my first. How about... I, I, I can't correct anyone. Anyway. I have numbers dumb, like... Uh, That's okay, so are we, and we made no, this goddamn thing. Really. Yeah. That's not how numbers work. Why That's, is zero the, up there? It's the simple and beautiful equation. You have to embrace yeah. it for the purpose of this panel. This, 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 like, this, this, like, this is like Skynet getting sentenced. This is like real-time Wikipedia. This is, a, this is... We haven't even finished explaining it. No, <laughs> we never will. So what we have represented on stage are, are four, you know, nebulous lanes of, of what would you call it, Paul? Nerd, nerd yeah, expertise. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so what you see, O, is is uh, observed nerdiness. That's objective nerdiness. That's what... Based on the scientific data we will collect. Exactly. And uh, so O is the sum of C, which represents comic books, which are represented on this stage by Matt Fraction and uh, Kelly Sue Connick, of course. You are. G, of course, is the game lane, which is represented by Mr. Mike Sonker right here. Oh. We'll get to the lower case in a second. <laughs> L is for literature, Norte Jemison, who's here with us. And M is sort of a sort of catch-all for other media, mainly TV and movies, we hope, uh, represented here by Mr. John Hodge. And there's an X factor that um, I'm going to, uh, you know, add either a negative uh, or positive number two in each of these uh, categories based on what I think I've, I've witnessed in our, our time together, things I know that you like that may overlap and you don't realize they might with a certain thing, uh, certain cool factors that might detract from your overall now we, need an, uh, now we need an explanation or a description of what is cool. Well, we're going to do that in quantum. Yeah. Okay, well... And is one, does one cancel out the other? Well, they can. can. It can be a negative cool? or positive value. This discussion right that's... here is already raising your X factor. By asking to define your terms. <laughs> and also playing to us, because we like being called cool by now. <laughs> <laughs> so we need a starting point. We were talking about this briefly with Amy uh, earlier, earlier tonight. Just... Again, we know this is all arbitrary, just go with us. But on a scale somewhere between negative five and positive five, with zero being the average person, whatever that means to you, what number would you use, what integer would you use to describe yourself? How nerd are you for, for, to determine your P perceived I, nerd? I, I feel like it's pretty low. I think, I think it's like negative two. Okay. Because I got... I, I, I saw you can't first, be wrong I saw about the first movie when it came out. I don't remember much about it. Uh, I have never seen any of the Star Trek movies. But... <laughs> the collective intake of breath in this room has produced the oxygen. All the gasps. Uh, but I, I am very, pretty conversant with the, uh, the original series. So you're more nerd than you're, so you generally you feel you are more nerd than some, but less nerdy than most. Not as nerdy as I would like to be. Okay. That's that's what that's what the purpose of this is. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we now have a P of negative two, and now we have to determine O. And here I turn it back over to Ted. Well, we're going to determine O by going through the categories, talking a little bit with each of our representatives here, and hopefully, hopefully engaging uh, them in some discussion with Amy herself, and uh, and then when we're going to arrive at a number. Then we're going to open it up to the floor. We're going to arrive. That's going to be a great idea. I can already tell you. If we get oh my beyond C before the end of this, I'll be amazed. We're gonna, beyond answer. Then we're going to we're going to arrive at a second number, and we're going to de determine the delta, and that will determine the efficacy of this panel. Wait, wait, wait! To use those terms you were asking about earlier tonight. 
first of all, can I just point out that John looks like he's gone to his happy place? Yeah. <laughs> John's just like a million, million, like he's in Cheyenne, Wyoming or something. I offered him the microphone back and he hasn't taken it. <laughs> Matt, you, Matt, you got the mic. Let's let's start with you and Kelly Sue. Now, I want to I want to establish that uh, in the as far as comic books go, I actually know that Amy draws a lot. She draws comics. We we've, we've actually drawn some comics together. She's been doing it for a long time. She's a fan of graphic novels. But not so much serial comic books. No, no right? superhero stuff. I don't, so I feel like that doesn't count. It's all like, you know, Donald Trump. All right. Okay. Let the experts interact with her first. <laughs> what, what, I, what I would love to elicit, uh, what I would love to elicit from you guys before we before we just start, you know, shouting things things out at, at each other is within the world of comic books. What do you consider a, a tourist? What do you consider a nerd? What do you think your um, perceptions of of, uh, of how things you know have have uh, what is the value of, of like an old Jack Kirby thing versus a sort of new you know edgier indie thing and and how do you see it fitting in and what would you recommend uh, to get Amy started down the road to appreciation of this? <laughs> you go first. Well, I'm uh, uh, a fan of. Uh, if this try that rather than you know you're you're a girl you're like this you know you are uh, we are all complex beings we all have tastes and, and fears I don't I feel like any time a comic book generates a piece of media that earns billions plural of dollars we are outside of the realm of nerd yeah. there's nothing really specialized about it. it's like oh no I listen to rock. Oh, like, uh, right there, uh, 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 Marlon Brando, have a seat. Uh, it's, it's, it's not terribly, uh, you know, billions and billions of dollars come out of these things. Not to get all sagany, but like, oh, there's nothing underground about that. There's nothing, you know, it's just a matter of taste. I'm like, okay, superheroes are not your jam. Great. There's so many. Although I bet we could find the superhero that's your jam. We could, sure. But, you know, at the same time, it's, it's like, um, if someone doesn't enjoy a particular kind of cuisine, why don't we go find a cuisine you like? Instead of like, no, no, you just haven't had the Ethiopian dish that appeals to you. Let's keep shoveling Ethiopian food at you. Like, maybe like Italian or whatever. I feel like you've hit on an interesting point where the, it can't be too mainstream. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Although, Star Wars is pretty mainstream. Star Wars is extraordinarily mainstream. When the movie has earned, is what it has earned around, when Deadpool, for fuck's sake, has earned, <laughs> earned, like, it doesn't play anymore. Like, is that a sequel to Deadpool? <laughs> Does that mean Deadpool, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I literally just wrote it. <laughs> it's gonna open at Easter. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 you know, it would be like somebody saying, "Yeah, I, I heard an Eagles song. I'm not into music. Yeah. <laughs> let's not listen to the Eagles. Let's find other things." So, you know, I would, I was, I'm a big fan of. Well, what, what, like, what was the last great novel you read, or what was the last movie you saw that really? You know that really you were excited about was the last record you couldn't stop listening to. Like let's, I, I like kind of building that words from there. And uh, comics, like novels, like music, like food, like literally anything. There's so many, such a panoply of choice. That so Amy, what was the last great comic yeah, you read? <laughs> but, but I think like, no, before, no, before, I, before I, we jump to that, but just oh, like, I, we're I, in I, a very special. Uh, uh, we're in a moment now where uh, the role of the curator. Is kind of yeah. very big right now yeah. uh, in a world where you know we have the heads of major television studios complaining that there's too much television. I would argue there's too much shitty television. Yeah. Yeah. And what we need is someone to go, oh no no, you should check this out. We need this panel. We need we need this exactly. Panel. <laughs> well, I, I would I would I would not mind uh, having Kelly Sue's kind of kind of bend that uh, toward the superhero side of things. I'm I've been obsessed with uh, Marvel's Agents of Shield as of late, uh, but I'm not, I, I don't think that's necessarily the, place, the right amount of applause. This place for Amy. How do we feel about Jessica Jones? Guess who just... Well, that's, that's what I was going up to. I don't, think that's the, I don't think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the right place for Amy to jump in, but maybe we can, we can find the right place for her to jump in. Yeah. Maybe it's Jessica Jones. I mean, I think, like, the, 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 the question I think you asked first was, what, what is tourist and what is nerd? Yeah. Um, and I think, like, 
uh, tourist is, is actually the assumption that comics are all superheroes, right? Um, uh, or, or, or that, oh, you're a girl, you'll like Sandman, or like that kind right, of... Right, yeah. Or but, they can't um, be adult. They can't be... For, they all have to be... Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. right, which is hilarious, because in fact, almost none of them are for kids. It's a real problem. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's incredibly difficult to find comics for kids. But, um, so... And, but, like, there's, there's, there's sort of good nerd, and there's bad nerd, and there's... There's, like, the, like the, the peak nerd is uh, is the Wednesday comics person, right? Yeah. That is, that is who has a poll list, yeah. right? Can, okay. Can you, can you explain that to Amy then? A poll list, oh God, I'm sorry, <laughs> stick with me here, okay? Okay, so our system is kind of broken. I'm not gonna explain why I could, but it would eat up the rest of the panel. We can talk about it another time if you're interested. Please, please explain it so I don't have to say anything. <laughs> um, but uh, our, our system is sort of broken, so uh, the way that comics are, are sold, oh God, pre-ordering in five minutes or less. Um, it, it, there is a catalog that comes out. Imagine if you were buying shoes like this. There's a catalog that comes out three months in advance. It describes the shoes. You don't get to try them on. And you need to let your retailer know whether or not you're going to buy the shoes based on this description and then you're stuck with them. That sounds crazy. Yeah, it is. Also, you have a limited size box for your shoes. Yes. You can't actually get all the shoes you want. And some of the shoes that you order and commit to buying are just not going to show up. <laughs> and they might, also, they they might might pumps. also, sometimes <laughs> one shoe is going to fight another shoe. <laughs> For no discernible reason. <laughs> okay, so, so, forget all that. But let's talk about the alternate universe shoes. Uh, I'm gonna uh, reboot so, so. all shoes. <laughs> now they're hats. So if you decided, for instance, uh, uh, that you'd read a little something about this comic book called Bitch Planet. Yeah, uh, I don't know, some broad. And, uh, and you're like, oh, uh, I think I would like to check that out. And I would like to ensure that I don't miss an issue. Then you would set up what's called a pull list with your local retailer. And uh, you would give your retailer the titles that you would like to pick up when new issues come out every Wednesday. Now, <laughs> Bitch Planet doesn't come out every Wednesday, but new comics come out every Wednesday. And usually at most retailers, you can go and pick them up about once a month, and that's cool. So organization and obsession are a big part of this. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well. It's, it's, also, it's also important to be a completist. Well, although it, it, it was in the way that bins were important before we crawled out of the swamps, right? Because yeah. now, if you have a smartphone, you have a comic shop in your pocket, and you can pretty much buy what you want whenever you want, and you don't have to be at a place at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. Right. Right? Uh, but, but we were asked about Peak Nerd. Sure. Peak well, Nerd I, is my, Wednesday my, my, local comic I'm, shop. I'm, I'm, I'm yes that. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, I, there is that, but now we have, we have, we have freed ourselves of, the of, 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 of such clumsy things as time and space. <laughs> and you can, just, you can just buy a comic when you want on your phone. And I, and, and, and so we, why is that not peak nerd? Well, I'm, not, I'm suggesting that maybe this is now. Right. I'm suggesting that maybe, and, and it's, a, it's a, the dinosaur is very slow to realize. Wait a minute, things are different. But I think any time you make a conscious choice, oh, oh, I gotta get that new comic. You have achieved peak nerd now. Whether you do that on a phone, whether you go to a specific destination to do that, showing up every—it's it, a weird ritual. It's a sort of. The funniest thing Mark Miller's ever said is on the internet, every day is free comic book day. <laughs> you know, in, the way that, in the way that the internet has really hurt uh, 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 certain uh, musical choices and, and things like that. But uh, I think anytime you peak nerd is like, oh, I, gotta get, I gotta read the next one. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, you know, that, that, that is, regardless of how you make the decision, rather than having someone force you to who reads this. And the basics of uh, the comic book industry are, it's very different from books in that that because it is dominated so much by superheroes, 
Um, the, the organizing principle is publisher, which is unlike any other. You don't, you don't go into the bookstore and you go, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the Random House section. <laughs> yeah. I only, or, I only, oh, no, 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 by 10 Speed yeah. Press. I only, only listen to Warner Brothers records. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, it, so, uh, Weirdly, that is how my, my industry works. Yeah. You know, like, this might be a common thread. Right. Yeah. That instead of organizing by human, we organize by loyalty. I do hope there is a lot of overlap because we are 23 minutes into this yeah. and we're still not seeing it. I'm going to pause the middle time on, 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 this, on this thing really quick and we're going to skip the recommendations part and we're going to throw that in at the end because I want to get Nora in, in here right. to, to actually be, uh, you know, it, it was mentioned that this is different than the, uh, than the book publishing. Um, again, let's get let's let's not get into the recommendations right now, but just to establish some of Amy's we'll bonus later. Yeah, um, you know, I know that again, you're not a big current. Uh, you don't even know the difference between sci-fi and fantasy. I think I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> Star Trek is sci-fi. Star Wars is fantasy. Star Trek is a western. This is a person, though, who has made fun of, of my uh, 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 Tolkien nerddom by saying, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's just me, me being a dick, though. Then you're in. You know, that's kind of Is he making fun of Tolkien sort of deep nerd? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Requirement. Yeah. It's, like, it's the same way. Like, if you, 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 sort of, you, have to have an, uh, uh, you have to have an allegiance to either Star Wars or Star Trek. Um, and you... And, See, this, this is this is something that this is this part of the reason I want to get Nora in here because a lot of that kind of that kind of binary opposition it is very sportsy and it's very boy y to me and it's it's an aspect of it's an aspect of some of this that I think um, could you stop saying ass please because that's offensive. <laughs> uh, anyway, I would I would like to, I would like to tell you something. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your 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 you know entree into into writing what you know what what you do and you know how you would possibly draw somebody like Amy you know into the, the fold. Okay, um, I'm I'm actually going to back up to what you said about how not specifically that, um, but so it sounds to me like like one of the defining characteristics of of a nerd in comic system is someone who has the passion and the dedication to, to establish a pull list, to follow the same characters obsessively over time. Oh, yeah, yeah, to, to stay with it long enough for, for the big picture to become clear. So we're talking passion, we're talking long-term dedication. That's it. I, I'm just gonna say, I am... talk to about the literary side of nerdom because my fiction tends to be kind of a fuck you to the traditional literary side of nerdom. But, um, but I, I will say that that is the sole defining characteristic of nerdom. You find something you like, you, you, you immerse in it, you swim in it, you splash it everywhere, you find people that want to bathe in it with you. And that's basically it. Now, you can, you can you can learn certain basic vocabulary. You can learn certain basic uh, uh, calling cards and things like that. Yes, it's a good idea to know your elves from your dwarves. Um, to understand that you don't toss the dwarves. To, to understand that you know a blaster is not the same thing as a phaser. But so long as you get those those very basic things down, and frankly, you know, there, there's a core problem that with with a lot of this. You know, it's it's. It's a lot of fun to to have that phaser versus blaster argument, but on the other hand, there's a there's a gatekeepy aspect of that, and, and gatekeepy is a word. Clarity is a word. So that's when you get people challenging each other on their degree of nerddom based on whether they know how to use the twenty-sided die in the Dungeons and Dragons version third edition. Um, you know, what are you so pitching me? What? Are you pitching me? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so what kind of books do you like to read? Uh well uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. why does it have to be a kind? There doesn't have to be a kind. Yeah. Right? So your who's your favorite what was your last favorite book? Um I 
read this uh, detective series by John D. McDonald. Um, I obsessively read every single one of the 30, 30 series. Dirty, dirty. Can we repeat that sentence? I obsessively read every single one of the <laughs> series. These are these are Travis McGee. Yes, Travis McGee. All right. So, if you read all of them, and by the way, they all have the same plot. Right? <laughs> Does anything else out here always have the same plot? <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. Work, right? yeah. What right? could that be? So, yeah, so that's a real core indicator. Yeah. That you were able to get beyond book two of Travis is hanging out with his alligator in his, uh, in, in his uh, houseboat. Mm -hmm. Let's do that Wait, again. Wait, is it about a well, boat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a houseboat oh, you know, is an alligator. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preemptively declare, that is nerdy as fuck. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay, Nora, I think we need to add an equation, so that's... That, uh, that's a five. That's uh, over N-A-F. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. I, Nora, I agree that's N-A-F, but... <laughs> so, what you're defining as nerddom is the classic... Chris Hardwickian principle of <laughs> it's not what you love, it's how you love it. Yeah. And, and I think... I, Obviously, a nerd for boxing. Yeah. Which, well, would would you I, I agree? Been, well, I have been at times. I mean, not right. I'm not but if the antithesis of nerd is jockdom, as it is generally described, can you be a nerd for sports? Yeah. 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 Football. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not asking this with any prejudice. I'm asking, like, Nora, do you feel since you since you brought up the definition about, or you know, you brought up this issue of. It's the it's the, the the completism and the uh, obsession and that sort of thing. Is it do, does the genre of the thing that you love mean anything to you? I, I do think. 